Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching from. God bless you. Thank you for joining this um, teaching tonight. So excited to be here. We thank God for the platform and for the privilege of the internet to connect with people. Um, no matter how far the distance can be, distance is no more a barrier in reaching out to people. So I just want to take advantage of that tonight to just share with us on the matter of destiny and especially on fulfillment of destiny. I want to welcome everybody. So invite somebody to join us here today. Um, invite somebody. Let me just give us that moment. Invite somebody. Invite your friends. Invite um invite your loved ones to join me uh please let me know where you are watching from let me know where you are joining me from tonight before we go into today's conversation please um let me know if you can hear me please i'd like you to engage the comment session so let me know if you can hear me if i'm audible please let me see that at the comment session such a great privilege to have everybody here tonight we give god all the glory we give God all the praise, such a faithful God, such a wonderful Father, we thank Him. Let's give Him thanks. You can share this video, yes, just share it so that um, more people can join this conversation tonight. Father, we thank You. Lord, we give You all the glory. Thank You for the provision of this platform. Thank You for revelation knowledge. Thank You for blessing us today. Thank You for Your mighty hand upon our lives. We give You all the glory. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we magnify you. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you for your loving kindness towards us. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. We thank you. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we ask that you help us tonight. We ask that you grant us understanding. We ask that you grant us revelation and he also grant us wisdom to be able to comprehend and to be able to come into the accuracy of that which you have for us. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name and everybody say amen. If you can hear me, just simply type amen, type amen. If you can hear me, please let me know at the comment section. Please feel free to share this video. This this short um, teaching tonight is going to be of tremendous blessing, especially to the young people. It's going to be of tremendous blessing to you. And um, I want you to get ready um, to learn, to unlearn and to relearn. So get your writing materials and also let's do some teaching tonight. So please, I would like you to... Um, okay, thank you. All right, so so feel free to share this video right away. Let me just give you one or two minutes. Just share the video, share it, yeah, so that other people will also be of tremendous blessing to this teaching tonight. God bless you. God bless you. So now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be starting with the scripture. I'm talking on the matter of destiny fulfillment. I'm talking on the matter of destiny fulfillment i'm talking on the subject i call destiny fulfillment i'm going to take my anchor scripture from jeremiah 29 verse 11 somebody can you can paste that scripture at the comment section jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 i'm going to be read from the new king james version but whatever version you have you can kindly share it at the comment session the scripture says for i know the thoughts that I think towards you. The Lord is speaking here. The Father himself is speaking here. If you read from verse um, 10, he said, For thus says the Lord. So this is from the Lord. So he says that the Lord knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Let me say that again. God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Somebody type it and say after me, say, He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards me. Yes, God thinks towards you. My Father and the Lord, we always say, God does not think against us, he thinks towards us, which means that God has thoughts or intentions and he channels those intentions to us. God has thoughts, or we can use the word plan. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God knows it. You might not know it, but God knows it. Your parents might not know it, but God knows it. 
Your friends might not know it, but God knows. People around you might not know. And that is why you shouldn't be angry the way people treat you. You, know, you shouldn't be angry the way people relate with you because they don't know God's plan. In fact, okay, I'm, I'm, don't, don't let me run ahead of myself. The scripture says, for I know the thought that I think towards you. So God think towards you. God has what we call intentions for you. The Bible says, and the Bible, and the scripture, you know, the scripture gives us the content of that thought. The Bible says, and that thought is a thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So that scripture rule out the fact that or rule the statement of the belief when evil things happen to people and they say it's from God. Evil is never from God. Evil is not in God. Evil can never be from God. So whatever that is happening to you that is evil, it is not from God. It's from the devil. In fact, from his name, devil, D-E-V-I-L. You will notice that evil is even in his name. Devil, the evil. That's the meaning of the devil the evil so god does not do evil so jeremiah 29 11 says for god knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you he does not think against you he said say the lord he said his thoughts are of peace he said thoughts of peace the word peace there talks about the word shalom thought of peace and not just of peace and not of evil and the end result is that to give you a future and a hope Wow, to give you a future and a hope. So the reason many people they are giving up over their lives is because they are ignorant of that plan that God has towards them. They don't have that hope. They don't have that. They don't have that knowledge of the future. But the Bible says God knows. And listen to this: you cannot attain destiny fulfillment if the knowledge about your life ends with God. There must be you you yourself you must come to the knowledge of your destiny you must come to the knowledge of god's plan for your life the bible says god knows the plan he knows it so if god knows the plan he think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 it must not end there for you to fulfill destiny you must also come to the knowledge of that same thought the same thing that God knows. So what do we call alignment? Alignment is when you're thinking or when the knowledge of yourself is in line with the same knowledge that God thinks towards you. So listen to what I'm about to say. Destiny can either be aborted or destiny can either be fulfilled. Destiny can either be aborted and destiny can either be fulfilled. And let me say this, that the beginning, the starting point of destiny, the starting point of destiny fulfillment is the knowledge. And that knowledge is the knowledge based on what God knows. So it's not only you that, it's not only God that knows, you must know. You must know. And that's why one of the prayers we must keep praying as believers is the prayer of knowledge. Ephesians chapter 1 said that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation. So we must accurately come to that point of knowledge. What do I need to know? You must know what God has in mind for you. God has plans for you god has intentions for you if you can hear me just type he said god has a plan for me he has plans for me the bible says he thinks towards you he thinks for you what it means that god channels his thought in your direction there is who god wants you to become there is what god wants you to become there is a place god wants to take you to and if you don't come to the knowledge of that destiny fulfillment might be a serious problem god knows the thought that it thinks towards you listen the reason you will um the women treat you will get at you is because you don't have the knowledge of that plan god has a plan for you why should you think that god is not god God does not god has not been good to you he's been good to you in fact the plan of god for you has been in existence before you showed up in the realm of time let me say that again the plan that god has for you has been on ground even long before you were born jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 god said to jeremiah in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 he says 
Jeremiah, he said, before I formed thee in your mother's womb, I knew you. That is the same knowledge I'm talking about. Is what we call pre-knowledge or foreknowledge. Is the knowledge that has been before you showed up in the in the realm of time. God has a knowledge of you. There is something God has in knowledge about you, about who you will marry, where you will live, what you will do, the kind of job you will do. God has plan. So a man will struggle in life when he's ignorant of the knowledge that god has for him before the creation of time let me say that again god has plans for you and the plan of god for you has been before you were born before your father met your mother the plan has been there before your great grandfather met your great grandmother the plan has been there so it is important for you the moment you showed up in the realm of time to come to the knowledge you must come to the knowledge of that of that plan of god's intention for you so there will be crisis the moment you don't know the bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil lest satan takes advantage of us so satan wants to take advantage of us and how it does that is to make you ignorant so ignorance is a major destiny disease kai let me tell that again ignorance is a major destiny killer when a man does not come or does not have the knowledge of God's plan for him, there will be trouble. That's why for you and I, you see, it does not matter where you were born, how you were born, uh, and who gave birth to you. It does not matter. The moment you showed up on the plan on this planet Earth, there is a plan of God for your life. And let me say this to you, that that plan has been existing before you showed up in time. Just like a manufacturer and a product you know the manufacturer makes the product before the product will show up the manufacturer had in his mind to create something there is an intention the purpose is why the creation so it is important for you to understand that god has a plan for your life so the first thing you need to do the moment you showed up into the realm of time and you are conscious of destiny is to come to the knowledge you must come to the knowledge of god's intention for your life that was what god introduced joseph to when joseph was growing up even at a tender age the bible says joseph had a dream that dream is the picture of god's intention for him that vision that's some people can call it the vision but the bible says joseph had a dream that dream is just the revelation it's just the unfolding of god's plan for him and that's why you must pray that father open me open my eyes to be able to gain access to that which you have prepared for me because you cannot fulfill the destiny you don't know you can't you can't god has a plan for you God has a plan for you. The plan of God for you is a plan that is of peace and not of evil. That one is settled. But what I'm saying is that it's the knowledge of God's plan for you should not end with God. You must also come into the accurate knowledge of that plan for your life. You must come to the knowledge of that, of, of that intention. So God channels thoughts, intentions. He has plans for you. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. But for you to accurately walk in that plan, you must, when I mean must, you must come to the knowledge of that plan. You must come. So God opened Joseph. He opened Joseph to the revelation of that plan. He opened him to the revelation of that end. That's why Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, To give you a future and a hope. That future, old King James used the word, to give you a, a, an hand. Old King James used the word, to give you an expected hand. Yes, the, so, so what God did was that God planned your end even right from the beginning. Kai. Let me say that again. God planned your end from the beginning. God planned your end from the beginning. Before, so, so as far as God is concerned, God is seeing you based on the end which he had planned. As far as you are concerned or human beings are concerned, we journey from our present into the end. So the wrong description of you, listen to what I'm about to say. The wrong description of you is the description based on your past and your presence. Your present. 
the long description of you is the description of you that is based on your past or your present why because the accurate listen the accurate description the accurate um, picture of who you are is that predestined end that god already programmed from the beginning no matter the bible calls him alpha omega the beginning and the end no one that Bible calls the Bible says just is the author and the finisher. He has programmed your journey. He wrote the script of your life. He wrote the script. Every chapter, every chapter of your life, God already programmed it till the end. To the end. So as we live our life based on the choices we make, we walk from one chapter to another chapter towards that end towards that end so you must come to the accurate knowledge of that plan you must come to the accurate knowledge of god's plan for your life god has a plan god has a beautiful plan so it does not matter what is happening around you all you just have to know is that there is a better future ahead of you because you must understand the three major um components of time what i mean what i mean component the three major dimensions to time we have the past the present and the future god designed everything the bible you know god designed from the beginning of your life to the end he knows the a to z and everything between he knows everything he's omniscient he knows it you don't know it but you have to depend on the one that knows it he know he has the master plan he has the master plan just like an architect an architect can have the design of the building finished on his paper or on his um, on his system that plan has been programmed by god but the moment the plan is given to you can you live in that plan no you can't live in that plan that plan will become you can only live in that plan when that plan now become tangible let me let me say that again so an architect you consult an architect you want to build your house to live in you consult an architect and what the architect will do is to draw the plan is to draw the plan of that that is going to be it's going to be a duplex it's going to be a bungalow it's going to be a two flat or it's going to be a three bedroom flat it will draw it and the plan will contain certain details it will contain dimensions of how everything is going to be and when that plan is given to you you can know oh this is the living room this is the guest room this is the ante room this is the toilet this is no you can see from that plan but you cannot live in that plan god has a plan for you see it does not matter how people define you the best definition of you is the definition that god gave you before time people might call you prostitute that's not what god calls you people might call you dollar that's not what god calls you it's not part of god's plan for your life that is not what god has said about you it doesn't matter what the doctor have said it doesn't matter what government is saying it doesn't matter what people around you are saying what god is saying is very important the reason you are affected by what people are saying is because you are ignorant of that which god have said about you or you will ignore what god have said about you the bible says the plan i have towards you it's a plan of peace of is a good plan god has a good plan for you god has a plan for you the fact that you are not there yet does not mean that that plan is not valid it does not mean that that plan is not valid so so when the architect hand over the building to you or the plan to you can you live in that paper you can live in that paper there is a need for that plan in the on that paper to be translated to the physical building that we see that is the exact way your life has been programmed by god god prepared your life god programmed your life and what god have written concerning you you have the responsibility to convert there must be a conversion process of the plan in the book into what people will eventually see and before that time you must understand the process of that program god has a plan for you god has a plan it does not matter what people are saying now listen listen don't forget what i said don't forget what I said. The way God sees you, God sees you from the end, not from the present and not from the past. You can, you can see yourself from the past, there will be a problem. If you see yourself from the present, there will be a problem. But the best description of you is based on that what the Bible calls the expected end in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. People will be wrong when they deal with you based on your past. Your past is messy. 
your past i understand how rough your past was i understand how terrible your past was i understand the failure you had in the past but that is not your predestined end your predestined end or your expected end is of good and not of evil it's of peace and not of evil god has a plan for your life he has that plan and you must not submit that plan to the devil you must not you must not you must not submit that plan to the devil through ignorance god has a plan for you now so so people will judge you based on your past and your present those are wrong people now let me say this to you the devil will want to relate with you based on your past that's why he will keep bringing condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Bible says, For there is no condemnation for them, to them that are in Christ Jesus, who are not out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. So, Satan wants to take you to your past. But you must keep that picture of that expected end in view. That's, what, that's how to journey into destiny. And listen, somebody said, When Satan reminds you of your past, remind Satan of his future. Because the future of the, set of the enemy is the lake of fire. So he is going to destroy. But my expected end, my expected end is of good. It's of peace and not of evil. Somebody type peace and not evil. If you can hear me, just type it. Say peace. Say my end is of peace and not of evil. I will not submit that plan to the devil. And you must know what is contained in your life. You must contain, you must understand the content of the scroll. I mean, you must understand the content of God's plan for your life. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. And that plan of God must be unveiled to you. So the unveiling of God's plan for you is what we call revelation. Kai. When that plan is unveiled to you, the Bible says it is the glory of the king to conceal a matter. And it is also the glory of the king to search it out. So God will conceal it. You only conceal something that carries, that is treasure. So, God, the glory of the king is to conceal a matter, but it is the duty, your responsibility to search it out. You have to search it out. The point of searching out is what we call revelation. When God gives you access to that which he called, we call the expected end. There is an end. Bible says, surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. There is an end. That end of you is not going to be destruction. So what should, what should you feel that the end of this is going to be terrible for you? Why should you feel that the end of this month is going to be terrible? It's not going to be terrible for you. See, the best description of you is not your past. The best description of you is not based on your present. What you don't have now does not define who you are. What you don't have now does not define who you are. The best description of you is in the resource of heaven is in the hand of god which is contained in god's plan and you must understand that the plan of god for you the plan is of peace and not of evil and god has the plan to take you to the end that's why i know you can't die now why because you have not got it to your end what should you think what should Satan start telling you you are going to die the reason satan is projecting death to you is that he wants you to accept it so that he can cut you off of that plan i can't die now someone said why pastor why you say that the reason i can't die now is because God has a plan to take me to that predestined end. There is an end. Surely there is an end. There is an end. You are going to see. See, if you don't, if you don't come to the knowledge of that end, there will be trouble. If you don't come to the knowledge of that end, Satan will cheat you. And so, so, so that end, that that future has been coded by God, but it is your responsibility to search it out. So God designed destiny. You have the responsibility to fulfill destiny. Let me say that again. God designs destiny. It is your responsibility to fulfill that destiny. You have the responsibility to fulfill that destiny. You have the responsibility. Listen, it is fallacy for you to think that God will do everything for you. God will not do everything for you. Everything God will do for you, he already did. <clears throat> everything that God will do for you, he has done it. He gave you his son. He gave you the Holy Ghost. He sent the Son to die for you. He programmed your life. You have the responsibility to pick your life and begin to see. Stop looking. Stop. 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 Stop waiting for people or stop thinking God will. God will not do anything. You will never enter into the realm of greatness if you deny the fact that you have a responsibility. You have. You have a responsibility. You have. It is fantasy. It is fantasy. It is fantasy to believe that God will do everything for you. If that's your philosophy, you will suffer. 
if your philosophy is that God will do everything, God will not do everything for you. Your destiny has been predetermined. It has been predesigned by God, but you must take responsibility to fulfill it. Somebody say, I must take responsibility. If you can hear me, type it, say, I must take responsibility. Yes, you must take your responsibility. Take responsibility for what? You must take responsibility to fulfill that plan. To fulfill that plan. And listen, your life has been coded. And the, the revelation of that, of, that, of that plan must be, you must come to the revelation of that plan. And listen, the declaration of that plan is what we call prophecy. Kai. The unveiling of that plan is revelation. The declaration of that plan God has for you is what we call prophecy. So prophecy is actually the declaration. Prophecy is the declaration of God's plans for your life. Let me just give you five qualities of a man or five things that determine the quality of a man's destiny. Kai. We are, see, God, God, you know, we are all equal. When it comes to creation, God created every one of us. But when it comes to fulfillment of destiny, we are different. And there are so many factors that can contribute to that, to that, to that difference. So there are five major, I mean major, there are five major factors that determines the quality of a man's destiny. Number one is the prophecy over his life. Somebody say prophecy. The prophecy over your life, which is the declaration of God's intention for you when Jesus was born. The angel appeared unto Mary and declared that prophecy even before Jesus was conceived, even before Jesus showed up in the realm of time. He said, you are going to give back to a child, that's prophecy, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall, they shall save his people from their sin. That is prophecy. The angel told them, the wife of Isaac, he said, inside of you, there are two nations. He said, the older will serve the younger. That is the declaration of of God's plan for your life God has a plan and listen see for that plan for that for that for that plan to be fulfilled there is a need for you to gain access what we call revelation revelation is unveiling of that plan and also you must come into the prophetic dimension which is the declaration see God must find somebody to declare his intention for you if it will come into reality if God cannot find then he must use your mouth if the two are not there there'll be a problem there will be a problem. There will be a problem. Somebody must communicate God's plan for your life. And I'm speaking to somebody listening to me right now. I want to type amen to what I'm about to say. I declare upon you, in the name of Jesus, you will not fail destiny. I'm praying for somebody listening or watching me right now. Type amen. In the name of Jesus, you will not fail destiny. Number one factor that determines the quality of a man's life is the prophecy. The quality of the prophecy. What is? What are the things that have been spoken ahead of you before time? What are the things? What are the things? There are certain things that have been spoken about you. Go back to God. Number two factor is the knowledge of God that you have. If you don't have the knowledge of God, how will he unveil his plan to you? He can unveil the plan to you. So, number one is the promise over your life. Number two is the knowledge of God. Number three is the quality of the choice you make. It determines the quality of life you will live. If you make a wrong choice today, you will find yourself in the wrong place tomorrow. If you make the right choice today, you will find yourself in the right place tomorrow. The reason why many people failed or why many people are failing is because they made the wrong choice. And listen, you can't make the right choice without having the knowledge of the one who made that plan for you. God has a plan for you. God has programmed your life. Stop thinking failure. There is no failure in the agenda of God for your life. There is no poverty in the agenda of God for your life. There is no barrenness in the agenda of God for your life. The fact that things are not working the way you expect does not mean that it will not work. Romans chapter 9 verse 28. Romans chapter 9 verse 28. The Bible says, for we know. For we know. What do we know? We know that all things work together so Jeremiah 29 said God knows Romans 8 now said we know so you must come to the point whereby you know what God knows about you there is something God knows about you there is something God knows about you if you don't have the knowledge of what God has intention on that time say I have the mind of Christ 
Somebody say, I have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is that mind that is in alignment with what God is thinking. That you, the, what you are thinking, what you are processing in your mind is the exact thing that God is thinking about your life. Five major factors that determines the quality of a man's life. Number one is the prophecy of his life. Number two is the knowledge of God he has. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. B, the Bible says, those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. So the knowledge of God bad strength to for fulfillment and it also gives us access or grants us access to doing exploit. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Listen, you cannot fulfill destiny if you don't know God. It's not possible. You can have achievement, but there won't be fulfillment. There can be achievement, there won't be fulfillment. So, Bible says for those who, for those who know their God, so the knowledge of God produces strength. That strength is for what? That strength is for you to be able to journey in the path of life. Those who know their God will be strong and they will do exploit. Exploit in life. Exploit in life is resident in the knowledge of God. So, five major factors. Five major factors that determines the quality of a man's life. Number one is the quality of the prophecy over the man. Number two is the knowledge of God at that man's disposal. Number three is the quality of the decisions or the choices such a man makes. That is why it is very important for you to master how to make the right choices in life. The reason why many people fail today was because they made the wrong choice tomorrow. You want to be in the right place tomorrow, make the right choice today. Make the right choice today. Make the right choice today. It is very important for you to come to the knowledge of that. You can't come into destiny fulfillment without making the right choice. Listen to what I said the other time. I said that the journey of destiny actually starts from what I call revelation. That was what God introduced Joseph to at the early stage of his life. At the early stage of his life. Bible says he gained access to that expected end. So I told you that revelation is the unveiling of God's intention for your life. That is what we call revelation. That is the vision. When God grants you access to know, God knows, but you need to know. The Bible says, Jeremiah 29, said, for I know, you must also know. It's not enough for God to know. You also, who carries the destiny, must know. So there will be no destiny fulfillment if the knowledge of your destiny ends with God. That must You must also journey into that knowledge. So Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, it said, For we know, we know, not God knows, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Number two, those who work according. Don't forget the word according. My father and the Lord, we always say the word according simply means not lesser than, not greater than. Exact, precise, accurate. So there are men, there are people who live their life according to God's plan for their life. You must live your life according to God's plan. But you can't live according to God's plan if you don't have the knowledge of God's plan for your life told you number one thing number one factor that determines the quality the one factor that the quality of a man's life is the prophecy over him number two is the knowledge of god at so, at your disposal number three is the quality of decision and number four is your assignment what god what everyone has ordained you to accomplish on the earth what God has ordained you to do. So God does not measure. God does not measure greatness by the number of cars, number of chairs, number of houses you build. No. He, you, must come to the, you must come to the knowledge of the assignment. What God has ordained you to do. So he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He said, before I ordain you. Be, sorry. He said, before I, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew thee. He said, I have ordained you a prophet. That was, that was the assignment. You can't fulfill destiny without the knowledge of that assignment. There is nothing called destiny fulfillment without the knowledge of that assignment. You must come into that knowledge. And that knowledge, you must come to that knowledge at the early stage of your life. It is very important. And that's why you have to keep praying. The Father, grant me access. Grant me understanding. Grant me the knowledge of that which you have ordained me to do. And finally, is the quality of the association you surround your destiny with. The reason why many people, the reason, the reason why many people failed, or why many destinies were aborted, was because 
they surrounded such destinies with wrong association. The Bible says, he that walks with the wise shall be wise, but the company of fools, the company of fools, the company of fools shall be destroyed. The company you surround your destiny with will determine what happens to your destiny. Listen, there are four things companies will do to you. A company or association will either add to you, subtract from you, multiply you, or divide into pieces. So check the circle of your, the circle of the associations around you. Check them. The man, the, man, the, man, the, man, the man called Daniel. Daniel had a, some very good friends that he could run to in time of problem. And that was one of the problems with the man called Samson. Samson, despite the fact that he had good parents, he didn't take advantage of that. He fell into the hands of Delilah. And that wrecked his entire destiny. I've seen how many people, how many people, how many people destroyed themselves because they fell into the hands of wrong people. Bad communication, bad company, corrupt good manners. You can't you can't fulfill destiny when you when you when you fall into the wrong hand of wrong people. And listen, one of the greatest, one of the one of the most powerful choices you must make in life is to find the right environment to plant your destiny. And the company, association, the quality of friends, or the people around you is what is the soil that allows for your destiny to grow. Yes, the soil. So you must be you must be intentional about the people that comes into your space. You must be intentional about the people that comes that surrounds your life. Paul said in Hebrews, he said, "Follow them who to faith, who to faith and patient obtain inherit the promises." Those are the people to follow. First Corinthians eleven verse one. Paul said, "Be ye followers of me, as I am of Christ." There are people to follow. There are people you need to follow. Stop. See, you can't you can't journey with someone who is not on the same path on your, of your destiny. You can't. You can't. You can't. And you must understand that the journey of that the destiny as what we call journey. Psalm 16, verse 11. The Bible says the psalmist prayed a very powerful prayer. And that's one of the prayers I wanted to be, I wanted to be, I wanted to pray tonight. He said, For you will show me the path of life. Kai. So that means life as a path. And that part of life must be shown to you. It must be revealed to you. That's what I call revelation. He said, Lord, grant me revelation of the part of life. Somebody lift your voice and declare after me. Say, show me the part of life. Type it, type it, type it. Say, show me the part of life. God must show you that part of life. He must show you that part of life. He must, you must ask him. It's the ministry of the Holy Ghost to reveal you, to reveal to you, and to bring you into all truth. Truth about what? Truth about Christ. Also truth about your life truth about christ and also truth about your life what is the truth truth are the realities that are in christ jesus the same thing jesus said about you the same thing god said about you the same exactly the way it has been programmed by god i remember in the book of luke when bible says jesus went into his temple into the temple as his custom was he asked for the for the scroll and he began to open and he was reading and he was reading and the bible says he got to a particular place a particular prophecy do not forget that prophecy is the declaration of god's intention for your life as he was opening as he was opening he got to the place written by prophet isaiah that is isaiah chapter 61 that was where jesus opened then he began to read and he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to to heal the broken hearted he has given me see, see, the moment he was reading that he came to the accurate understanding of that i want to celebrate daddy in this house daddy samson ajitomobi daddy thank you for joining this this conversation daddy thank you so much as also my spiritual father to daddy Olanio. thank you for being part of this of this um, of this of this video so 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 it is very important for you to understand that david said you will show me the part of life life as path psalm 16 verse 11 he said for you will show me the part of life you cannot get to the predestined end if you don't know the path that leads to that end because what determines the path you will take in life is the destination and that's where we find the word destiny from destiny is destination is from the word destiny so jeremiah 29 11 says they said he said for i know the thought i think towards you god think towards you god does not think against you say the lord thought of peace and not of evil to give you a, a a an expected end that is the end that end now determines the path you will follow so the psalmist says in psalm 16 verse 11 said for you will show me that path why god why will god show you that path so that you can get to that end if you are ignorant of that end you might not follow that path 
You might not follow that part. You might not go through that part. And listen, in the part of destiny is a part that is in faces and which contains different things. That's not my focus today. But I'm telling you that there are five things that determines the quality of a man's life. There are five things that determines the quality of a man's life. Number one is the prophecy over that man. Number two, the knowledge of God over that man. Daniel chapter 11 verse 2. Number three, Three is the assignment that is upon or everyone has ordained for that man to execute on the earth. Number three is the association that that man surround himself, himself with. And the final one is the quality of decisions such a man will take. And that is very, very important. And there are two major things I would like to share with us before I end. I'll continue this maybe you know, some other time. Is that in the journey of destiny, two things are required. Two things are required. Number one is what we call direction. Number two is what we call instruction. Instruction but guidance. You need direction. Somebody said, why do I so you need instructions? You need directions. Somebody, somebody might ask me, why do I need direction? Direction will tell you where to go. Instruction will tell you how you will get there. Let me take that again. You need directions and you need instruction to fulfill destiny. You need direction. You need instruction. Direction is where you are going. Instruction. Instruction. Instruction will tell you. Direction will point to you where you are going. But instruction will get you to where you are going to. So you cannot fulfill destiny without instructions. No wonder. No wonder. In the book of Proverbs, you will keep hearing, my son, hear, listen to your father's. There are instructions. There are principles. That's what I'm saying. What are principles? Principles are unchanging laws that simplifies life and amplifies your result. So there are principles that make for destiny fulfillment. There are principles and those principles are contained in instructions. When you violate those instructions, then destruction will be inevitable. Will be inevitable. They will be inevitable. So you can see, it does not matter how fast you are on a wrong lane. It will not take you to the right place. So it is not all about speed. It is about direction. That you are following the right path in life. You are following the right path in destiny. You are following the right path. And you can come into that if you don't know where you are going to. And listen, there are systems that God have already set around us to grant us direction and instruction. One of such is the word of God. One of such is the word of God. So I was sharing about Jesus. So the Bible says when Jesus took the scripture and he began to read and he saw the place that was written concerning him have you discovered the place that was written concerning him that's what we call scripture is the script that contains your future which must be unveiled to you for you to enter into the reality and for you to enter into what we call destiny fulfillment jesus saw it Bible says he saw the place that was written concerning him that the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me he was reading that was that is god's intention for him i told you i said the other time that what we call revelation is the unveiling of god's intention for you then we have what we call a uh, prophecy prophecy is the declaration of that intention see when these two come to play in your life and you now add what we call action to read with direction and instruction wow destiny will be fulfilled there will be destiny destiny fulfillment there will be destiny fulfillment so the moment jesus saw the place that was written concerning him he closed the book and he said to them today this scripture will be fulfilled in your eyes that's how to fulfill destiny you must know what has been written concerning you you must know the things that have been declared concerning you you must know if you don't know you will just keep wallowing in the journey of life you just keep meandering just keep running elder scatter the reason why many people are frustrated today is because they don't Sorry, they don't have the accurate knowledge of what God has ordained for them. Instruction. And listen, as you journey in the path of destiny, the moment you miss your step, by no matter what the factor can be, the moment you miss your step, you will need what we call correction. Correction will bring you back on track. Instruction will keep you on track. Let me say that again. Instruction will keep you on track, but correction comes the moment you miss your track. But when you now miss your track and you ignore correction, then destruction will be inevitable. You will not be destroyed. Somebody type amen. You will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. 
you will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let me just share these four points with you before I go. Why do people end up, why do they end up become failure despite the glorious destiny over their lives? Why do people end up as a failure? Listen, remember what I said. God never programmed anybody to fail. God never ordained any man to fail. See, God never ordained anybody to be poor. God never programmed anybody to be sick. God never ordained any destiny to fail. You have the responsibility to determine if you will succeed or not. Like Joshua said to the children of Israel, he said, choose whom you these days, who you serve. Is it the God of your father or the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt? He said, but as for me, it's a personal decision. You must make up your mind to fulfill destiny. Somebody type it and say after me, say, I will fulfill destiny. Type it. Say, just type it. I will fulfill destiny. I will fulfill destiny. You must fulfill destiny. It must be your pursuit. It must be your pursuit. And it does not matter what has happened to you. If you are just joining, I would like you to watch this video from the beginning. You understand some of the things that I've shared. Let me give you four reasons why people end up, why they end up with failure. They end up in failure despite the glorious destiny over their lives. Number one is what we call excuses. Many people, they make too much excuses. Kai, excuses. See, I, I, said so, I said in one of my books, I said the word excuse is to squeeze you out of use. <laughs> because in the word excuses, you will see the word use there. So, you see, the moment you start making excuses, then you are denying yourself of destiny fulfillment. That was the same problem with Adam and Eve. When God gave dominion, God gave dominion to Adam. When Satan came, Satan came and he tempted Eve. When God showed up, he met Adam and said, Adam, what happened to you? You know what Adam did? Adam gave an excuse. He said, it's the woman you gave to me. He couldn't take responsibility. Then, dominion moved by, by making excuses. Excuses takes away, transfers dominion to the one you are, you are to, 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 to another person. And Bible says, God said, he said, the woman you have given to me, then dominion moved from Adam to Eve. Because God will always go in the direction of dominion. Then God went to Eve and said, Eve, what happened? Eve said, is this happened? She also transferred dominion to Satan. Kai. The next thing that God did was that he cursed the serpent. He didn't cost man. He only punished them. He didn't go and read your scripture. He didn't cost man. He was back for Adam. He said, he cursed the ground for his sake. He didn't, God cannot cause what he has blessed, but they lost what he called dominion. That's what, that's what you will lose when you fall into sin, when you disobey God, you lose dominion. A destiny will lose dominion the moment that destiny begins to violate, begins to violate the principles that makes for destiny fulfillment. Proverbs 13, 15 says, the way of a transgressor is hard. The way of a transgressor. So even when you are joining in the path of life and you begin to transgress, it will become hard. It will become very hard. Very hard. Very hard. God, so stop making excuses. Proverbs 20 verse 4. You know, the man said, I can't go to the, I can't go to the, I can't go to farm because the weather is cold. The Bible says, such a man, we end in poverty during harvest. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Stop making excuses. And the reason I did, I, the reason I'm not rich is because my parents didn't send me to school. Stop that excuse. The reason I couldn't do it is because there's nobody to help me. Just like the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, ah, there is nobody to help me. See, you will need to understand that some of the people we call great today, they were also at disadvantage as you are. They were, they were also at disadvantage as you are. Some of them, their cases, some of them, their, their situations are more worse than yours. Are worse than yours. Are worse than yours. Stop giving excuses. And it's because of the economy of Nigeria. In the same economy, people are making it. The same situation that drowned some people was the same situation that lifted the ark of Noah. In the same economic meltdown is the same, is the same economy that lifted some people's businesses. Stop giving excuses. If you want to fulfill destiny, you have to take your excuses. And because nobody is to help me, because I didn't go to a good school, because I was not born in a, in a because I was not born in the US. There are people living in UK and they are not okay. Stop giving excuses. There are people, there are people without father, without mother, and they still meander their way to greatness. There are people that they were not privileged to have good parents. Your father is a drunkard. So what? So what? Stop giving excuses. Jeremiah said, God, you can't use me. God said, I've ordained you. He said, I was young. God said, no, it's not a matter of being young. I've ordained you. 
Gideon said, Lord, I don't have a strength. God said, I, He said, Go in this thy might. No matter, you don't have an excuse. Moses said, I'm a stammerer. God said, That's not an excuse. To fulfill the destiny I've sent you to do. Stop giving excuses. So I'm asking you, Why have you not executed that plan? Because I don't have money. It's not money. Move. Listen, I've said it before. If you don't move, everyone will not move. Stop giving excuses. Number two reason why people end up in failure, why people end up in failure despite the gross destiny they have is because they violate principles. They violate principles. I've read that Proverbs 13, 15. The way of a transgressor is hard. Listen, there are principles that make for destiny fulfillment. There are principles that make for destiny fulfillment. One of that is what we call consecration consecration to every destiny there is a required level of consecration to bring that destiny into fulfillment ask samson that's what killed samson the moment samson violated the consecration over his destiny he died he killed himself on he had he died untimely consecration so there are principles that make for destiny fulfillment go and search out those principles Daniel said in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, he said, I, Daniel, he said, I have proposed that I will not defile myself with the king's name because he knows for that assignment God has given to him, it requires some certain level of consecration. There are principles that you must obey. Principle of timely steps. Principle, there are principles. Principle of consecration, living a holy life, of separating yourself unto the Lord. Principle of discipline, diligence. You can't fulfill destiny and you are lazy. A lazy man does not fulfill destiny. Principle of diligence. Bible says, see thou a man diligent in his business. He will not stand before mere men, but he will stand before kings. Priest, that is diligent, that you are diligent. So, number two reason why people end in failure, despite the gross destiny, is because they violate principles. Number one is excuses. Number three is indiscipline. Car. In discipline, that is that's rampant in our days. In discipline, what in discipline is to a destiny is all I call control. Yes, just like the control valve on your tap, or just like the brake system in your car. Imagine a car without a brake system. That car is heading for destruction. That is the exact same thing to a destiny without discipline discipline you must be disciplined discipline too much too much slumber bible says is a, a, a little sleep a little slumber so shall poverty pounce on you you can't be sleeping too much you must be disciplined that was what daniel did he disciplined himself too much of eating discipline you can't be sleeping as if you're in a sleeping competition discipline discipline yourself discipline engage in discipline there is nobody that fulfilled destiny without discipline those who fail lack discipline caught me anywhere discipline you can't spend everything if one of the disciplines you must learn you one of the discipline you must learn is ability to save for tomorrow you can't keep eating everything that comes into your hand today when you enter into another season what will you have the reason why many people are stranded today was because the resources that is meant to handle them today, they've ate it yesterday. That was the problem of the man called Esau. Esau sold his birthright for a, he couldn't discipline his appetite. He couldn't discipline his appetite. Indiscipline will rob you of destiny fulfillment. Indiscipline will rob you of the glorious destiny that you have in Christ. And finally tonight, uh, what... Uh, uh, why do people end up in failure? Why do people end up become failure despite the close destiny? It's what I call distraction. Distraction will take you off track. You remember when I said the Lord will put you on the path of life? The moment you are distracted, you move out of that path. The one that is looked upon, like Yoruba will say, does not look around. Yoruba will say that the one that is looked upon does not look around. Let me say that in Yoruba. Uh, yes, you don't look around. You must be focused. Focus simply means you are blind to everything, but you are only looking at one thing. Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do. This one thing. Keep focused. Nobody fulfills destiny by distracting themselves. 
Paul said this one thing, Philippians chapter 3, said this one thing I do. This one thing I do. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 to 14. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. He says, this one thing I do. I keep pressing towards the mark of our calling. You must keep pressing. You must keep pressing. Jesus said to Martha, when just visited their house, and the Bible says, uh, Martha was running around to fix stuff for Jesus. And Ma Jesus said to Martha, he, um, when Martha said, um, Master, why can't you tell my sister to join me in what I'm doing? Jesus said to Martha, he said, Mary, have chose, she has chosen one thing which no man have, will take from her. Have you chosen that one course? Have you followed that one course? The moment Peter was distracted while he was walking towards Jesus, the Bible says he began to sink. You will start sinking in destiny the moment you are distracted. Destiny can be aborted. Destiny can be fulfilled. For destiny to be aborted, is by, is, you, you, you determine that. For destiny to be fulfilled, is in your hands. I would like you to watch this video again and i want to pray for somebody listening to me right now i wanted to type it as we we're praying i wanted to type it that conversation sometimes say i will not abort destiny type it say i will not abort destiny after me say in the name of jesus i'm declaring upon somebody saying mary right now i declare in the name of jesus you will not embrace what god have rejected for you type amen i declare upon you in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill destiny you will fulfill destiny. You will take accurate step in the right direction. In the name of, I'm declaring upon somebody, you will take accurate steps in the right direction. In the name of Jesus. You will take accurate steps in the right direction. In the name of Jesus. The law will cover your tracks. The law will cover your path. In the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that the law will open positive path for you. In the name of Jesus. You will not fall into the hands of wicked men. If you are hearing me, just keep typing amen. You will not fall into the hands of wicked men. I declare in the name of Jesus, Satan will not I of Jesus. Satan will not hijack what heaven has ordained for you. You will not fail in destiny. In the name of Jesus, you will not fail in destiny. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I there are four things I call destiny killers. Number one is profit. Number, number three is excuses. Number four is sex, spiritual laxity. I will explain that in my next video. I will explain that in my next teaching. I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, you will enjoy divine speed. You will enjoy divine speed. You will enjoy divine speed. Somebody say amen. You will enjoy divine speed. You will enjoy divine speed. You will, you will have what we call safe landing in destiny. You will have safe landing in destiny. In the name of Jesus. Listen, when it comes to destiny fulfillment, you don't do what you like. You do what is right. When it comes to the matter of destiny, you don't do what you like. You do what is right. I declare, receive the ability to know what is right. Receive the ability to know what to use, what, what to do right. They receive wisdom. Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. I ask the Lord we grant you wisdom. Oh my God, I declare upon somebody, receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. Receive wisdom tonight. 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 In the name of Jesus, your destiny will not fall into the hands of killers. Your destiny will not fall into the hands of destiny hijackers. In the name of Jesus, God will send you men that will interpret your dreams. God will send you men that will interpret your dreams. In the name of Jesus, in the name, I declare all things begin to work together for your good. All things begin to work together for your good. In the name of Jesus, I declare all things begin to work together for your good. In the name of Jesus, lines are falling together for you in pleasant places. I'm praying for somebody, maybe you might have missed your way. I declare by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, receive divine alignment. By the mercy of God, you will not dash your feet against the stone. In the name of Jesus, your journey is destiny is preserved. The Lord preserve your destiny. In the name of Jesus, the Lord preserve your destiny. Your destiny is preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will fulfill destiny. Receive the ability to do more. Receive the ability to know. Receive the ability. Receive the spirit of revelation. Receive the spirit of wisdom. Receive the spirit of revelation. Receive the spirit of wisdom. I declare that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding Understanding be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. In the name of Jesus, the eyes of your understanding 
be enlightened be enlightened your eyes of understanding is enlightened you will know what is the hope of your calling in the name of jesus you will take decisions that will be according to god's plan for your life you will not fail destiny you will not fail your generation you will not fail your family you will not fail yourself in the name of jesus i declare god will raise you quality men god will raise you the right set of people god will bring you into the company of the right people in the name of the lord jesus things are working together for your favor lines are falling together for you in pleasant places in the name of the lord jesus you are blessed you are blessed and highly favored in the name of jesus if you are blessed tonight somebody shout i am blessed if you are blessed tonight please let me see that at the comment section just type i am blessed yes i'm blessed i'm blessed god has a plan for me god has a plan for me and the plan of god for me it's of peace and not of evil to give me an expected hand yes that is god's plan for you god has a good plan for you and you will fulfill that plan in the name of jesus thank you for joining me tonight thank you so much for joining me tonight god bless you thank you so much for joining me tonight and please i'd like you to do me a favor at the end of this video kindly share this video with somebody somebody might somebody might need this video somebody might need to watch this video or even you you might need to watch this video over and over again and i pray that god will bless you in the name of jesus i'm going to come again and i, uh, and I will share the remaining part of this teaching series with you i commend you to god tonight and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified in the name of jesus if you are blessed tonight please type it at the comment section type i am blessed god bless you have a wonderful time in the name of jesus